it is Leah from Dime Culture and today I am going to be doing a review on Stillman and Burns Beta Series Sketchbook. So let's go over the qualities of the book itself before I get into actually reviewing and showing what it's capable of doing. So Stillman and Burn is a sketchbook manufacturer that has many different versions. So there's their Alpha, Gamma, Epsilon, Beta, which is the one we're doing today, Delta, Zeta, and they have a new one called a Nova series where it's different colored pages. So the Beta itself is white paper. It is classified as what they're calling heavy, like extra heavyweight paper. And the reasoning behind that is because it's 270 GSM, which basically means the paper's thick, which is good because this book is designed for um, wet media, watercolor inks, you know, but you can also use things like pencils and colored pencils and, um, I don't know, the other dry media. And in the book itself, you get 26 sheets. So here's the thing. The pages are double-sided, so that actually means you get 52 pages. Anyways, now that is the basics, the, the basics, let's just get rid of that. Uh, before I show you this version of the sketchbook, which is the one I'm currently using, I'm going to show you the first one I ever purchased and then the next one. I'm going to just show you a couple things. There's some pros and some cons I want to show you. and then you can decide, are they cons you can live with, cons you can't live with, you know, stuff like that. Let's, let's just, let's get into it. Okay, so, when I purchase an item like a sketchbook, there are five things that I consider when it comes to repurchasing. One of them is, can it take what I'm gonna be using in it? So will the paper itself be able to withstand the type of media I'm using um, or will it fall apart? So I'm going to start by showing you this one that I, from 2017, I think. Yep, 2017. Um, I'm going to show you some pieces of artwork that I was doing back then because I used some media I used that was different versus what I'm using now. I keep saying media. I mean medium. Just so you know. <laughs> I, I actually um, just finished an, an exam and we were talking about media, you know, like different forms of media you'd use for things. Anyways, moving along. Um, yeah, so this one here, like this one on this side, are colored pencils. And the paper was really nice. Now the thing is with this paper is that it's supposed to be cold press and cold press watercolor is a finely uh, texturized paper but it's still textured you know like there should be texture. This one is very smooth it's like a it's not a hot press. Hot press is super smooth it's kind of like using I don't know, copy paper, you know, it's smooth. Where cold press is supposed to be textured. I said that again. I said that twice. How many times have I said that? Anyways. Oh my God, is that my saying today? Anyways, any hoot, moving along. Oh my goodness. Um, this paper, it, uh, it has minor texture. It's smooth enough that when you use colored pencils and media that is dry like that, it goes on smoothly. It doesn't give you much disruption of the material itself. Uh, this one I am showing you because of, can it take what I'm putting on it and will it buckle because of what I'm putting on it? So what I did here, if my memory serves me correct, I put water on here, I put drops of colors, and then I it did this. And then I would wait for it to dry or I'd smush it around a little. And then I would put something else on top of it. So this one here is ink. So once the watercolor was done, I then started laying on a lot of ink. 
This one, I actually put watercolors back on top of it, but there are more opaque colored watercolors. And then I also drew on top of it with pencil crayons. Colored pencils? Pencil crayons. Is that showing my age by calling it a pencil crayon? Do people still call them that? Anyways. <laughs> wow. Anyways really is my saying for the day. It's just stuck in my head and it's just going to keep happening. This one here I wanted to show you to go along with the whole buckling of the paperwork. So this one was, I just taped it down and then I laid water in and then I just moved some color around, watercolor. And then once that layer dried, I would add more and more and more and more and more and more and more. And it didn't really buckle. So these are the two pages. I'll just pull it this way. As you can see, it's barely buckled. Like, barely, barely buckling, but still a buckle. And this last one I wanna show you in here for the materials that can be used in the sketchbook. This one here is Copics. So I don't use them anymore, but at the time of owning, of working in this one, I was using it. And if you've ever used Copics or alcohol-based markers, you would know that the marker ink itself spreads, like there's no tomorrow depending on the paper, and it also bleeds through really, really badly. Um, now this paper is designed technically for watercolors. So using alcohol based markers in it means that you are going to be wasting quite a bit of that marker juice, uh, because it will fill it up, but flip it to the other side and you can barely see the marker ghosting at all. Let me bring this up closer. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so you can't really see it. So you could easily use your alcohol markers in this sketchbook and then paint on the other side. You could, if you use other medias, you can always do something else on that side or you can leave it blank. It's up to you, but it's not super noticeable. So you could easily just use it anyways. I saved this tab because I have a con. There is a con to this book. Okay. Um, Let's try that again. Sorry, my battery died on my camera because I'm a professional and I checked that before I started filming. Clearly not. Um, okay. So what I was discussing was how the binding itself being glued uh, did come with a bit of a flaw. So some of the pages were over or extra glued and it caused an issue so I had to rip them apart a little. But that being said, the book itself is not falling apart. Yes, I had to take some pages, but not all of them. Ooh, so pretty guys, such pretty. All right, so that was the first one I ever used. And after using it, I liked it so much. Despite that flaw, I bought another one. I bought a bigger one. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna show you three things. Three, this is not three, this is three. Three things in this book. The first one is related back to my, will this paper take what I throw at it type of thing. And the answer is yes, it does. Um, but I do wanna point out that you need to be careful with the type of materials you use with it and how you use them. So for example, this little cartoon illustration here, I drew it with a Posca pen. And um, if you're anything like me, you might have a heavy hand. So when I write, when I draw, it's like I'm just drawing like this. Um, I put so much pressure in what I'm doing because I'm so concentrated. Um, it, you know, it's pressured. Uh, however, when you're drawing with a Posca pen on this paper, you may tear up the paper a little. And that's only because Posca pens 
aren't soft brushes. So they're hard nibs. I don't know if that's in focus. But they have a hard nib right here where you're drawing. And if you are drawing too heavy handed, you can tear up the page a little. It, it's not horrible, but it's not amazing because then you're like, what? why is there this weird texture to my drawing? That being said, I'm going to show you another uh, illustration type thing that I did with a Posca pen after learning from my very first mistake using a Posca pen in this. And it'll show you that it's actually not that bad using a Posca pen. But I just wanted to let you know that there is a possibility that you could rip your paper a little. Okay, so one of the bad things I wanna show you next is that this book itself came with a bit of a flaw. So as you can see right here, it looks like the paper just wouldn't accept the watercolor. And that's because while I was painting, for some reason, this side was having issues with one color. And at first I thought when I was painting it that it must be the paint itself. I was using um, one of my Windsor & Newton Cotman's and technically Cotman's are, you know, they're fuller, they're fuller with binder. No, let's try that again. They have more binder in them, so they're not as smooth to use sometimes, but I used that same paint again on another uh, piece of paper and I didn't have any problems. So it was the paper itself. There's just some waxy uh, film left type residue on it. And it is unfortunate, but that does happen. It's not an uncommon thing to find in sketchbooks that that happens. Now, I'm showing you this because with the larger paper, I found it handles laying flatter and taking a lot more water so much more better than the smaller book does. So remember how I showed you um, this one here and how, you know, the pages themselves don't really stay flat that well. The pages buckled slightly. It's not a lot of buckling, but it's slightly buckled. When using the bigger paper, because it itself is heavier, it has more surface to lay out, it actually handles taking a lot of water better. And I know that's weird, because technically when you have more paper, if you add more water, it should buckle the same. But the buckling wasn't huge. It did a bit of a little buckle, but it's not hugely vast. Like it doesn't have a lot. And I found that to be quite interesting that the bigger version actually performed better. I just wanted to show you that so you would understand. Now let's go over the one that I purchased recently. Oops. Um, everything's, everything's flying everywhere. Okay, so... I'm using clamps to keep it shut because this one isn't really late. This one isn't laying flat. Like it's, it's the pages just don't. They just want to do this after been painted on, which is so, so easy for painting, right? Guess what? I really don't care. I mean, in an ideal world, every sketchbook would be perfect and everything would be amazing and nothing would have a flaw but i'm not a like this this doesn't really it's it is what it is it doesn't really matter to me okay so i want to show you the posca one that i had just mentioned i would be mentioning so as you can see i illustrated my new posca colors here and i used a lot of ink and then I drew with the Posca pens and there is no paper issues. So trick here for anyone that is interested in Poscas or are using Poscas, just kind of glide, you know, don't draw like you're drawing for the, you know, like, like what is that gif with the cute kid that's doing the uh, like that? Don't do that. Um, just draw.
so I'll just do a little a little flip through as I go over my last thoughts okay so one does this book does this paper take using multiple forms of media uh, yeah yeah it does does the paper buckle only a little so it does take water media, it does take heavy a Posca pen styled material medium stuff with slight buckling, but honestly, everything buckles. And three, does it handle color? Uh, yeah, look at that. Look how beautiful that color looks. I mean, some sketchbooks, when you are using different types of watercolor uh, in it, the paper will react with the pigments funny and then the colors won't be as accurate as they should be. Um, especially if you're using core, I found they don't always show up nicely. So for example, this orange here is one of my cores and I've tried it on different paper and not all paper is created equal in the world of paper, but you would think that orange would look orange. Yes. A vibrant orange would look vibrant, yes, no, but this paper, it handles it, which is really nice. Now, four, is the book binding good? Um, does it fall apart? Are there any issues? E yes and no. <laughs> um, so the book doesn't fall apart. There is, it, none of the pages fall out. Um, it has stayed as one piece with all my old stuff with me rip with me bending it and ripping those pages because of the glue. There aren't any issues in that factor. It's just that some of them are glued down funny. And I would say because of that, the, the book binding section on this isn't amazing. If I had to rate it out of five for book binding, I would say it's a three. But that's only because of a few factors. And those factors are, I had too much glue on a couple of those pages. Um, the paper, paper itself doesn't really lay super flat. But yeah, those two things, livable, but annoying. And then my last thing, like number five, when it comes to me looking at sketchbooks is, would I buy this sketchbook again? And the answer to that is, uh, clearly I would. I own three of them now. <laughs> um, but that being said, would I still buy this moving forward after using a third version of it, like using this one again? And my answer to that is, I'm not sure. Um, I really like the paper. I like how it handles color. Uh, but I'm not sure if I like how the soft covers are. I thought at first the glued section was just, uh, you know, a hiccup in that one book. It was just a, a one-off type thing. It wasn't because I've had the same issues with this one. Um, now, why did I buy another small one, you might ask me, because I had the issues with the glue on that other small one. And my reason honestly was I bought this because it was the right price. It was the only size they had in stock and it fit in my purse. So I am planning on going vacation this summer and I wanted to take something with me that, you know, I could put in my bag and if I want to quickly sketch something or if I saw something, I could just pull out the book and I could work in it. I don't know, I'm standing on this page. <laughs> okay, so would I buy it again? Yes, I'm going to. I'm thinking my next one is going to be a hard bound or the wired bound version. Now, I do want to discuss something when it comes to buying sketchbooks, and this is something that I myself will factor into purchasing a sketchbook. Um, when I first purchased that first one back in 2017, this one, I bought it off of Amazon and I was convinced wholeheartedly after watching a few reviews online that it was the one for me. I was freshly back into watercolors and I thought if you're going to do something, do it right because that's my motto. Uh, the problem with that is 
sometimes the price isn't really worth it. So right now on Amazon, this one, like Amazon.ca, this book is $44. I would have purchased it around that same price on Amazon.ca. And I thought it was worth it because it was pro quality paper. Everybody that I was watching online loved it. It was worth the dollars. Would I spend that much money on a sketchbook this size again? No. Okay, no, I changed my mind. No sketchbook is worth that much money. Um, but on Amazon.com, it is only $15. And at my local art supply store here in Ontario, where I live, uh, at Curry's, it's $17.99. So yeah, the price was right. I purchased the second one again because it was in stock, like I said, and it was at a nice price. So if you are thinking you want a high quality um, sketchbook to practice in it and practice like layering and coloring and you know pretty much do things in it that maybe your everyday sketchbook you don't want to try in because maybe that paper is too thin to do it, I would say yes, get one. If you wanted a sketchbook for travel and you want good quality that can take the media, yeah get it um, but only get it if it's worth your while financially like we're creatives we are artists um, some of us are only into doing art and want to do art because we need it to relax we're doing it to distress and having to purchase materials that cost a lot of money is not de-stressing it is adding on stress because now your wallet your you know, credit card bills are going to be higher, so don't buy it on Amazon.ca, okay? If you're in Canada, order from Curry's. Their pricing is actually really nice. I'll leave a link to it in the description. And if you are in the U.S., I'll leave a link to the Amazon.com one there. Know that none of my links are affiliate links. Um, I'm just linking it so that you can get it if you did watch this video and you thought, you know what? with the pros I saw how it uses all those different materials and yeah there's a couple faults but personally I'm just like Leah it honestly those little minor things aren't huge for me I'm going to actually buy that book do it the link will be there if you have any questions about these like these booklets or um, these booklets <laughs> if you have any questions about these sketchbooks uh, leave it in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer it as soon as I can with as best of the knowledge base that I can as well. I'll even link um, a couple of the reviews that I watched because uh, some of the artists were reviewing the hard covers, not the soft covers. So their binding on those ones are different. Okay, so that is all for me today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I hope it helps you in the process of looking for a sketchbook. Until next time, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy the content here on Dime Culture, definitely hit that subscribe, sub, 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 kaboosh, kaboosh. <laughs> okay, if you like the material here on Dime Culture, definitely hit that subscribe button because this summer and moving forward, there's going to be videos every other week and they're going to be art videos, uh, de-stressing videos, like how to be creative and zen out, as well as some product reviews that will help you go forward and creating art and bringing art into your life for to help you heal and if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up and until next time stay magical